So let's start simple and get complex. I'm going to create myself a platonic solid. There we go. Let's make it an icosahedron. Let's see, yes, four subdivisions are fine. Radius of 10 is great. Let's do that. Good old friendly icosphere. There we go. Drag that into our graph. Hide it, as is our habit. Or hopefully will be, eventually. Hook this up to the terminal so we can see what's going on. Very first thing we're going to do is turn it into a volume because today is volumes and we're working with volumes. But instead of all that level set shenanigans that we've been doing, this time we're going to turn it into a fog volume. The other thing I'm going to do before I do anything, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. So let's just do a quick transform. So, and we'll do a scaled rotation translation to matrix. So I don't have to learn how matrices work. That's cool. And all we've got to do now is scale it. And there we go. And you can all go home. Cloud is done. Perfect little UFO cloud. Do something like nope with that. But that's cool. So we have our base volume. Doesn't look all that cloudy just yet. You know. Let's turn that into a voxel field because fields are faster and easier to work with. Here's our voxel field. And I'm just going to really quickly set up a scope so that we can see what's going on. Now you see how the scope isn't showing anything? My voxel field is still set to voxel sign distance. I need to change that to voxel fog density. And then you can see the results of the field. So this is showing me the fog density as a field. And we're going to be able to do things to this field to make it more cloudy. So bear with me. What we're going to do now is advect to this field. And what on earth is advection all about? Advex a scalar or vector field along a velocity field for the length specified by the time step. Clear as mud. Basically moves a field. But we'll get, we'll get into that a bit more later. So let's plug this in. And at the moment, it's not really going to change all of that much because we haven't got a field to advect it with. So if I put down a fractal turbulence field, because it needs to be a velocity field, it needs to be a vector field, look, that's just the turbulence. Plug that in. Still not much going on because our time step here our time step is the length of our advection. So let's quickly change that to 10. And you can see what's going on here. As it's using this field to move the values in the other one. So if I just turn that down a bit, you can see how this is working. So it's using the velocity coming from here to move the particles around inside this field, which is perfect. So then we come back out to a volume like so, and pop our volume back out to our terminal. Make sure that's set to fog density or it's not going to work all that well. And you can still mess with your uh, your advection time step here, and you can watch your field change. You can already start to see how we're getting maybe a little more cloudy with this. So something good to do now is to assign a material. And we assign a material because we want to see different things in the viewport. And for a start, we want this to be a cloud, so we want it to be white. So we're going to need a volume material, and that's going to be a standard volume material, like that. Goes into the volume material, you see it changes a little bit there. It's square at the moment, we'll get onto that in a minute. And so what I'm going to do is I can change my density, just using the shader and see what's happening here. And I can change how much scattering we're doing, including what might be better here is just to change the scatter color up a bit. Let's just change that quickly to HSV and see what happens if I put this number to five. You get the idea. Also, clouds being clouds, I'm going to change that back to two. And all I'm going to do now is create a light. Just a normal everyday directional light, I'll pop it up there somewhere, go to its attributes and I'm going to change its intensity to something like four, still can't see anything because lighting is just using default, use all lights. So now you're going to get some light on the top 
and light going through. Possibly a little too intense now. Take that down, up a little bit. Raise our density up so you can see it's casting shadows on itself and things like that. So yeah, basically we're just getting a little, little cloudy shape if we can. Just change this to absolute and see what happens. Has a think about it. And now we're getting quite a lot more detail. Right, done. Cloud, version two. Everybody go home and have a have a have a break. No, we've still got problems. This thing is is still cutting itself off. Stuff like that. So moving along. And again, all of this is in the PowerPoint. So you can follow it through with a bit more of an in-depth and uh, a bit more of an in-depth explanation. I'm just basically showing you how to do it. We're still working with fields and everything's cool. Let's work on our advection a little bit. So really what we want to do is, is vary the noise and uh, sorry, vary vary the scale of our advection field because it's a it's a bit harsh at the moment. It's still looking pretty good, but it's a bit harsh. So I'm going to put down a fractal noise field, which is just the, the scalar version of the turbulence field. I'm going to multiply the turbulence with it. Just to get some kind of look going on here. Let's push the magnitude of that field up a bit. I'm going to take this back to low res so it's a lot faster. But you can see what's going on there. So if we wanted that to be bigger and chunkier, all we'd need to do is drop the frequency and wait for it and you're starting to get better shapes with it. So let's just quickly take this volume back to relative so it's faster to work with. I might just make it a little bit higher res so we can see things going on, which is cool. So I'm not really fond of how the the field, well, the volume is hitting its own bounding box and cutting off here. So I'm just going to use my offset here to shrink it in a bit, maybe a little bit more, just so we've got less of that being cut off. And because I've done that, I can increase my scale here to get more sort of thickness, maybe 0 0.25. Like that. It's looking okay now. And then it's just a matter of getting it looking the way you want. So we can up the frequency to get more, sort of more bumpy sort of look. Or we'll use the ratio to make it more complicated or smooth it out a bit. Change the frequency with the frequency ratio. Something like that. Not looking too bad for now. Next thing we want to work on is the starting shape. It's, it's very regular. I mean, even with all of these bumpies and lumpies in it, it's very, it's a very regular shape. So what I'm going to do to my, to my platonic shape here is I'm going to do a bit of a displacement on this end. As we do, and we're going to use our old friend fractal noise field to do it. Because the fractal noise field is awesome. And I'm just going to plug this in here. And bring my terminal away from the field end. We'll just take a look at our, we'll just take a look at what our object looks like now. You see it's quite spiky. So let's just adjust some things here. Let's bring our frequency down and our magnitude up. Like that. And really what we want to do is, like, we, we're trying to get a different shape to our, we're trying to get a different shape to our final cloud. Which this is helping already. Again, we're still getting a bit of a cutoff there, but we're working on it. But really, what we're trying to uh, emulate here is that like clouds are, are a lot flatter on the bottom than they are on the top usually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come back here a minute and work on my geometry to do that. So let's take these guys, and what I'm going to do put out my put out my terminal. I'm going to get the point positions of these. Yep, and then I'm going to split that into its component parts. So that's vector to scalar or vector three to scalar. Let's just grab all of these guys and bring them back a bit. I'm going to do the old thing with the, like I said, we should probably build something to do this for us, array bounds and change range like this. So it goes from that and that 
2, let's just start with 0 to 2. And then what I'm going to do is put down an actual fractal noise. Now this is the geometry version of the fields that we've been using. So it needs a position input. I'm going to put this guy into the magnitude. And then I'm going to use this as the weights for my displaced points. So let's bring this along. You should be able to see it happen pretty much straight away because we have our terminal plugged into the right place. So let's pop this into the weights. And now you can see that the cloud is a lot flatter on the bottom than it is on the top. And if I start raising this number, and let's just make sure we've got smaller frequency here. So we've got more lump at the top than at the bottom. Self intersection there. So that means we can probably take our magnitude down a smidge like that. We can change our ratio to get a different look. Change our frequency ratio for smoother or rougher. That kind of thing. Maybe want to push the magnitude a little bit because it's being converted into a volume. It's things like these overlaps shouldn't be that visible. But now we've got quite a flat bottom of the cloud and quite a high top of the cloud. So at this stage, we'll come back and take a look at what our field's doing. See what our clouds are looking like. So again, we've run into the sides, but you can see it's flatter on the bottom than it is at the top. Which is a nice way to do things. And we're going to get kind of fancy and we're going to use it, do an iterative advection. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fractal noise field and I'm going to add a scalar field to it. I'm going to set that scalar field up to be something like 0 0.4. Pop that in there. Grab that. And that's kind of working pretty well. This allows us to just subtly affect things, but we're essentially adding a value to whatever comes out of this fractal noise field. We can also take our frequencies down or take them up. Or, you, know, we, you can play with the fractal noise. Field. So I'm going to take all of these guys and I'm going to copy them and make an iterate compound. Now you remember iterate from when we were looping in the strands? episode last week, pop everything of that in here. We want our voxel field coming in, so that, that's kind of important. Let's get our voxel field in there. And we're going to want our voxel field coming out as well, so the, the invected field coming out. So that means that this needs to go up to the output and has a port state with the voxel field here. Now this is giving me an error because what's coming out of here is a, is a vector field and what's coming in is a scalar field. And the reason that's happening is we need to move the entire advect in, inside of here. So we take this guy and we go advect field like we did before and this is our velocity field and then out we go here. And what's happening here, as with any, any port feedback loop, is it's using whatever comes out of here as the starting point for the next one. So it's essentially advecting itself over and over and over. And we want to make some changes to this so that we get a much better idea of what's going on and we, we just add some differences. And So what I'm going to do is take the current index, make it a float, and I'm going to scale the current and scale the current index by something. So that's scale as a multiply, as these things do. And then I'm just going to put down a value node. So right click, create value node. That way you've always got the right type. And let's set that to, looks like the PowerPoint 0.1. Just so make myself some room here. Now I'm just going to convert that to a scalar field by dropping down a scalar field node. Just like that. So that just lets you have a value, spits out a scalar field of that value. So we'll plug that into the value. And we're going to use this as the time node for both the fractal turbulence field and the fractal noise field. So what this is going to do is evolve those fields. So now we're going to use one of the compounds that we've supplied to you for the use of this, which is the descend compound. Descend. Now this is, it generates a gradually decreasing number over the iterations. So basically this is 
gradually decreasing the time step as the iteration loop goes through and the magnitude as well. So what goes into here is this again and to the base as the as the converted current index. So that's what it starts with. And we've got two different formulas as you see on the PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is just replicate that 0 0.5, 2.5 and 1. So that one's already done for me. Thank you, Ying Ying. That's awesome. And that's the one that's going into the time step of our advect field. So we pop that in there. I'm not going to see any results just yet because I, I haven't uh, hooked up the output. And then we'll do, this, do the same for, with the same input. So just copy and paste. We'll do the same for our magnitude on the turbulence field. So if we take that, the base is the same. The exponent is 3. Scale is 1. Constant is 1.3. And that fella goes in there. We've pretty much got everything set up to get this iterate running. Let's go up one. Don't forget you can set your max iteration. So I'm going to try it with 10. And now we just need these two connections that were in our advect field to go into our iterate advect field. So we pop that one in there. And we should just be able to grab that one and bring it in there as well. Now we can pull this out. And all of this stuff we've replicated inside of the iterate. Sorry, the voxel field coming out here becomes the input. How, how port feedback works. And I can change the number of iterations. You can see things changing. Change that to 10 or 50. And after a certain point, it doesn't really have much of an effect anymore. Which is okay. We can also make changes by coming in here, changing, say, the magnitude of our fractal noise field. So that's a lot smoother. Maybe go up to 2 to get some wisps coming out. Again, we can change the frequencies here. We can go to six frequencies to make it a bit more detailed. Change our frequency to get more things. It's really up to you how you'd like it to look. And it is quite a subtle effect, but that's okay. We can also, of course, there are many, many things we can change here to get just a difference in the look. And up to and including going back to the original geometry again and changing things. So you can put those out as controls if you like. You can wrap everything up the way you'd like it to be. And then you can go ahead and do the exercise on the last few slides of the PowerPoint. Slide 37 of week four, which is scattered advection. But I'd recommend that you take this and you have a play with it. Things like you can change the lights to get a different look as well. See how it plays. Add another light that is not quite as intense. So we get more of a looking cloud you need to make sure that you're keeping away from the edge of your bounding box here change all manner of seeds you can change the seed here to get a different displacement on the original mesh so 65 see what that does and of course when you when you've got something that you like the look of you can change your resolution to absolute once, once you're feeling kind of happy with the way your clouds are looking you can go to your field to volume node switch that over to absolute so you've got a much more higher resolution output Wait for it to do its thing, because it will take a little while. So there you go, happy little clouds. Yes, I, I've been wanting to say that for the whole video. But anyway, play with it. As always, have fun.